All right, and we're live. Holy cow, I'm a little starstruck. Um, I've got Amy B, Amy Brokehammer on the show, and I'm really, really excited. Um, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for asking me to do this. I'm excited. I've been listening to some of your previous interviews and getting all hyped up. Yeah, this is super exciting. I uh, couldn't come at a better time with um, EXPCon being less than two weeks away, and hopefully we get to connect there as well. Um, you know, I do this podcast just because I, I'm actually, I, I want to give each agent at EXP um, an opportunity to kind of share their story because we all come from different backgrounds. You know, we, we each have a unique story to share. And so I created this platform as kind of a sounding board for agents to come in and kind of tell their story. And um, what's really neat is what's happened organically is that it's also given our own EXP agents an opportunity to connect and get to know each other as well. So um, without further ado, let me just real quick, let's just dive into your background a little bit. Um, how long have you been in real estate? I'm a second generation realtor. My mom was in real estate before me. Uh, I took a side, a side venture after college and did a couple of other sales jobs, but I've been in, um, licensed in the state of Ohio since 2005. So right before the last shift happened yeah. through that. And now I believe we're to the next one. So great timing, by the way, I couldn't agree more, by the way, on that, that last statement. Um, I, I also believe, and if you look at the data now, you're starting to see that the market is starting to cool off a little bit. Um, I want, you said something that really resonated with me because you got into the market um, at 2005, which was actually the height of heights, right? Yes. And I then, bought a house then too. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. So, so um, your equity is, is probably just recovering by the way now, right? <laughs> I actually sold that house when there was no inventory um, because I had to take advantage of the market and Very then cool. bought another one in the, in the kind of the, the up, turn, but still yeah. at the bottom. So that is awesome. Well, what's really cool is like you and I are not very far from each other. Um, and, and in fact, we probably have crossed paths before somewhere. Um, I'm actually in uh, in Dayton and in northern Cincinnati. And I know you uh, are down in Cincinnati and in northern Kentucky, right? Yes. Yes. So tell me a little bit about, um, you, you know, you mentioned that you're a second generation realtor. And so I, I assume that for you, it was was that kind of the plan for you when you came out of school? Were you were you thinking, hey, I want to be a real estate agent like my mom? Absolutely not. That was exactly what I didn't want to do. Um, and I talk a little bit about that in my book. Um, I just, I saw the way that the lifestyle was and I didn't, I didn't want that. Um, and then I figured out how to fix it so that I could make it work for me and for a family. And, um, that's when I got into the business after a couple of years of hitting my head pretty darn hard on a glass ceiling at a Japanese pharmaceutical company. And um, I decided to give real estate a try. And uh, there was no looking back from there since 2005. But I've always been in sales from selling advertising at the at the college paper to selling Tiffany lamps or leather coats or, you know, whatever it was. I knew when I went into college that I was going to be in sales. So I got a degree, uh, two degrees, one in communications and one in psychology. And I am telling you, those were the best decisions I've ever, ever, ever made. I feel like even just now it's starting to come together so much more than I ever thought. Yeah. So good you just, stuff you know why you made me laugh right because of of your your text to me on on the way here i'm thinking of, i'm thinking of the whole psychology aspect of of what miss must have been going through your head at that point when you know when things don't go so well so you know and you know obviously in, in many many instances we can't control that but you know you're right i think that um i think and this is just my opinion. I think there is a, I think there's an emphasis on skill set in real estate. And um, I think there are a lot of skilled people, but I think there are a lot of skilled people that have the wrong mindset. And so in mindset is not taught very often in our industry. And what's interesting is I was talking to one of your friends, Rebecca Hamilton, about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and she's kind of going through some stuff right now with, um, you know, preparing a program to talk to agents and, and business owners about mindset. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, that's everything foundationally. If, if um, I think it's uh, Thomas Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Yeah. Mindset's everything. If, if, and, and, and it's also attitude is everything. I mean, if you go into the winter saying, well, we don't ever sell houses in the winter. Well, then guess what? You're not going to sell a house in the winter. If, if, and I talk about this in the book, you know, there's so many limiting beliefs that happen out there where an agent would say, I'm too new. Nobody's going to hire me. Well, nobody's going to hire you then, but there are ways around it. And really what is the most important thing is to get confidence and you get confidence by practice and by educating. And, you know, if you don't have anything else to do, you need to be reading, you need to be taking trainings, you need to be educating yourself because the faster you get up to speed on the knowledge, the more confident you're gonna be and that changes your mindset so much. It really just makes it a total 360 for it. Yep, couldn't agree more. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, you had probably if you if you worked in the pharmaceutical industry, um, from my experience, those are usually really good paying jobs. Um, so I assume that you got to a point and in doing that, you didn't there, that wasn't in alignment with um, with with where your journey was taking you. And, and so ultimately it wasn't about the money. You made a change. And I'm sure you talk about this in the book. Um, because you wanted to get more in alignment with your purpose uh, and where you were, where you knew you were going in life. But was that a challenge for you to be involved in a position where you uh, um, are, you, you know, you're making good money, you're quote unquote, you're a success in society, right? Um, and you, you know, you're kind of following through where you, you know, you do everything you're supposed to do, and then you realize, oh my gosh, this isn't for me. T talk about like kind of the emotional ride you went through in doing that. Well, you know, I was 23 or four when I first started in the pharmaceutical business and it was the same company and it was a Japanese company. And my first year I was number one in my area. So I had been to Hawaii three times for winning like the top agent. Um, and, I, and I'm not like shy to say at the end of when I left in 2005, I was making $85,000, which was the maximum that I could make in salary. I was making about another 20 to 25 in bonus, which again was the top. Like because I was at the top, I got the most money mm -hmm. because of my level. And then I was going to Hawaii and there got to a point where I was being micromanaged, even though I was the number one agent. and I'm like, why are you doing this? I am producing at a level that nobody else is. You don't need to micromanage me. And it got to the point where I was like, listen, I don't even want to raise. I just want more time off. I only had two weeks yeah. and they wouldn't do it. And it just, it, and I started taking my, my real estate license at that point because my mom said to me, okay, so I was getting up at 3 a.m., to drive an hour to be at a cath lab to talk to a cardiologist before he started seeing patients in the morning. And then they wanted me to work until, you know, um, five or six o'clock at night when I got up that early to get there. Yeah. And my mom said, if you work just the same amount of hours, you're gonna make four times the amount of money that you're making right now. If you cut back your hours in half, you're gonna still make double what you're making right now. Mm -hmm. And so by my second year, I blew out what I was making with my other company. Yeah. Uh, super easy. So was that kind of your aha moment when mom came and said, Hey, it, listen, if you just work the same amount or even half the hours that you're working now in real estate and you apply yourself like you are there, you're going to make as much or more money, right? Was that kind of your aha moment? Yeah. And I also feel like fundamentally I had to sow my wild oats in another um, profession first, right? Mm -hmm. So I sold copiers before I sold cardiovascular drugs. Shut up. You're mm -hmm. lying. You did? You for didn't work 14 for 14 months. Did you 14. work for Modern Office Methods? No, I worked for Toshiba. Oh my God. You know, that's what I did. 14 months. That is crazy. So I was counting down until I could get a year of experience so that I could sell it to a pharmaceutical company and take a job with them yeah. and get out of that. But, um, it just became too too micromanaged and 
Um, I, I just don't believe in doing that. If somebody's performing, they don't need that oversight. So, yeah. and, and finally I stopped having dreams about, um, having my slip signed and all of that from back in the day when I was a pharmaceutical rep, I would wow. have dreams about them coming to me and saying, you don't have enough, you don't have enough slip signed. And I'm like, give me a break, you know? Wow. So, so. And, you know, I'm, that's so cool. So, uh, okay. So flash forward, um, 2005, you, you have your real estate license now. What does that first year look like for you? Um, I had it, I got it in June. So um, my birthday was June 6th. I got my license June 5th. And so I had six months in. I think I had 18 sales that first six months. And then my first entire year, I was on Circle of Excellence, which I think mean, meant at the time you had around 100 GCI. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of built up from there. And within my first full year, I got my... Um, CRS designation, which uh, I credit for the foundation of my business and all the learning mm -hmm. and training that I needed in the beginning came from them. And I just kind of grew it up from there. And what company did you start out with, if you don't mind me asking? Remax. That's where my mom was. So I just went with who she was with at the time. Okay. And then you eventually moved on to KW, right? Which is where I was at. Mm -hmm. when, when did you make that transition? Um. I was there for nine years. So I think around 2009, 2008, something like that. Okay. And, and so I had no intention of leaving. I was totally happy. You no, know, I truly believe that Keller Williams is an amazing company. It's an amazing company for many, many, many people. And Gary Keller is an incredible thought leader. He did so much for our industry. The books that he wrote are foundationally like a Bible. Mm -hmm. um, shift is my Bible and it should be everybody's Bible uh, right now. But, um, you know, I was, I wasn't looking to move. Um, and what's funny is I just had a conversation with my husband the other day about, um, why agents change companies. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, most agents leave a company because of something they were unhappy with. Most agents go to EXP for an opportunity. They're not leaving something they're unhappy with. They're going to something that's even better. Yep. Yep. Uh, and you know what? What's funny, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the, yeah. every Keller Williams agent I've had on the show, and I've had quite a few, um, not one of them has been unhappy with uh, where they were at in their business at Keller Williams, including me. And no one's ever come on the show and said anything bad about Keller Williams. And that, that's not the reason for this platform at all. And, and I knew, just so you know, I mean, I, I knew before you answered that question that you weren't unhappy with Keller Williams just because I know a little bit about your story. But talk, talk about like, um, obviously, so nine years at Keller Williams, I mean, you must have had some incredible relationships. Um, you, you know, you're, 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 you're obviously you're, you're doing business, you're doing all these different things, right? You've got a great social media following, you know, you're, you're becoming an author. You've got a class where, you know, you, you sell hundred percent of your listings. It's, it, and everything's going great for you. So this opportunity EXP comes along and talk a little bit about when you first heard about it and then, and then take us through that journey. So my mentor and eventual sponsor, Hank Avink. Um, joined EXP in January of 2016. And he wasn't selling real estate. He was actually coaching. Mm -hmm. So he just had to have a place to put his license. So I knew about it then. So I'll kick myself now for that and not paying more attention. And he waited, I would say, a good year maybe because we were in relationship, I would say maybe six to eight months to say, Hey, have you thought about EXP? And I was like, no, dude, I'm not doing that. I'm, I have too much going on. And then he came back again, um, last summer and he was like, I really want you to look at this. I think this is something that makes sense for you, especially with the way that you have this drive and desire to help other agents be better. Mm -hmm. And this is the culture that I'm seeing and, and I want you to be a part of this. 
So I listened to him and I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm good. And then finally he was like, Amy, if you don't take this seriously and pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you, I'm not going to be your friend anymore because you're, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. And I don't want to be the one that didn't tell you that. And so finally I got it. It clicked for me um, in June of 2017, last year. Um, I had to wait for the MLS to open up for us. So I had to wait about a month to mm -hmm. make the move so that I could sell real estate here and um, made the move. And once I got into EXP, you can't understand it when you first come. You can't understand all the opportunities and the facets of it. But when I started to put two and two together and I interviewed my friend, um, Greg Anderson, who was one of the first icon agents three years ago, mm -hmm. I think he's agent 200 or something. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize the benefits of the stock awards for icon agent and the benefits of the stock awards. I mean, last December, he just sold some stock and bought a brand new truck for $36,000. And it was wow. tiny little dents. And that's his retirement, you know, and you, you just don't realize it until you have it. Like it's amazing. And a year later, I'm able to look back and be like, in one year, I've gotten all the, this is how much my stock is worth. This is how much I paid for it. This is, you know, what my retirement account is looking like. And most agents don't even have a retirement. So I'm going on and on, but it is, it's an opportunity that you can't understand fully in the beginning. And right. it just keeps giving and keeps giving and keeps surprising you. And and so to me, I move for the opportunity. Yeah. So to my about, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, to my business, it, it it's not a change. It's business as usual. Mm -hmm. Really nothing's changed. I can sell real estate anywhere. Right. Anywhere. So you're doing the exact same thing you would have been doing at Keller Williams. You just feel like that you've added in these two additional opportunities for passive income, essentially, right? I'm doing the exact same thing. In fact, I want to make a point. Both myself and my buyer's agent have small kids. We each have two little boys. And two years ago, we made the decision that we are not in growth mode. We are in maintain mode. Mm -hmm. and, and most people won't admit that or say that and are ashamed of saying that because of our, our culture and real estate is think bigger, more, more, more. But our families are really important to us. And so we decided that we're staying at 12 million in production and we're not growing from there. So we did 12 million, two years at KW, and we brought that into EXP. We did our same 12 million again. We actually profited more money. I have a lot more money in my retirement than I would have if I would have stayed at KW. And the passive income is there too. Yep. So. I want to talk about something I like the 12 million. That's probably a lot to some people. And then um, there are other people that will watch and think, well, why would she want to stay at 12 million? But here's what I know about you. Um, I know that and I, this is probably truer for you than any other person that I know, uh, with the exception of maybe just a couple people, is that the client experience um, is like number one on your list, right? And you will, you're not, you've never been will ever willing to compromise the client experience, not even to do more business. Um, number one is integrity. That. Number yeah. one is integrity. Nothing trumps integrity. The client experience is number two. And you can't have a repeatable, deliverable client experience unless you have standards and you have systems and you have expectations set with your clients. So, you know, whether it's um, and, and that's what I share on my courses. I have a buyer course and a listing course. And, you know, I, I have to say here, Mike, the listing course was created in the shifting market. It was created during the worst times and it will see me through the next shift and anybody else that chooses to follow, you know, that system. Um, but that's also really important to me 
when I bring on a buyer's agent and we're a very small team. And again, we're not trying to grow. So integrity is number one and doing what's right for the client is number two. Awesome. Always. There's awesome. nothing else that matters. Truly. It doesn't matter if she's bringing in leads. It doesn't matter. Nothing. That's yeah. it. That's awesome. Um, talk a little bit about the, the, so I, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit back to sure. the, the time you were at Keller Williams and, and, and before I, I talked about all these relationships you had probably built out. Um, was that a difficult conversation for you when you made the decision, hey, I'm moving to eXp for the opportunity to then go to your broker or your team leader uh, and, and, and essentially tell them that, you know, you're moving on? It was like a breakup that I didn't want to have. Um, I didn't really have a relationship with my broker. I hadn't talked to her in three years. So it wasn't like that with my broker, but it was um, the managing partner mm -hmm. that I had a very deep relationship with. And, and I call him out in my book and he was a great mentor as well. Yeah. And I truly, um, I mean, I cried. I felt I know he was upset by it and I truly in my heart wanted him to come with me because I see so much opportunity and I know that he could do better at EXP than where he was based on the kind of person he was and the awesome way that he is with agents and the mentoring and the, and the encouragement and the coaching, he would just be such an amazing fit here. Yeah. Um, and I, I really, really, really truly wanted him to consider it. But he was he it's it wasn't an option for him at the time. And um, I miss him dearly. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I'm glad you're um, able to speak candidly about that. I think that be, because and the reason why is because I know that people will watch and listen to this who um, are are not at EXP now. Uh, and that is going to be a big issue for them. You know what I mean? Because they have built this relationship that they're either their broker or they're office manager, whoever they're having to have that conversation with is going to be a very challenging one. Um, but go ahead. You got a great thought here coming. I know. Well, I want to say that that relationship with the person that I had to tell, it was a very personal relationship as well. Mm -hmm. It was a, a deep friendship. Um, in terms of everybody else, the way that I see that and the way that I feel about it is we're all still real estate agents in Cincinnati that are going to buy and sell each other's listings. I just have a different logo on my sign. It's not that I don't like Keller Williams. I love it. And it's such a great office and such a great group of people. And I still think the world of them. There's no reason why we need to have any ill will towards each other. But that seems to sometimes happen, but not in my book. Yeah. You know, I have no ill will against anyone. Um, in fact, we're all, you know, need to be collaborating with each other and working together to close transactions. Yep. Houses. What piece of advice could you give to that agent um, who may be considering a change to EXP or even another brokerage for that matter, but is maybe a little reluctant to have that conversation because they feel like they have such a great relationship? I, don't, I mean, I can't give advice on that. I can just tell you what I did, which was vet the hell out of it and really make sure that I was making the right decision. And then, you know, that um, that mantra that they say, make a decision and then make it the right decision. That's what I did. And I, I had the decision made and he absolutely, I'm a high D. Yeah. And the guy that I had to tell totally knows me, like in and out. And he knew my mind was made up. Yeah. So I would say, make sure that your mind is made up and then share. But if I just, I hate that vibe of when an agent will go to their broker and say, I'm thinking about moving. And then they like negotiate some type of new deal. And I just hate that. I think that's so slimy. And, you know, if you're going to stay, stay for the merits of the company. If you're going to leave for another opportunity, leave for that opportunity, but don't use companies to play off of each other. Yep. It happens, unfortunately. Tell me, yeah. um, if you, here's what I believe, okay? And, and if, if, if you've truly built a relationship with somebody um, and like, 
you know, especially if it's a deep relationship and, and a friendship, then and you go to them because you feel like you have a better opportunity, um, that will test that partnership, that relationship, that friendship yep. um, to see what it's truly about. Because you yep. will see who you've really, you know, uh, formed that relationship with when you when you when you put that to the test with letting them know information like you know you're moving for another opportunity and what should happen is if you've built a true relationship is that they should support you in your new endeavor exactly. you, you would think that yes yeah so it's, it's hard when feelings get hurt yeah and it, it, it's unfortunate that that happens sometimes um and, and it it's, it's great to see someone like you uh, who's come out the other side of that and still has wonderful things to say about you, your former company. And, um, and hopefully, you know, if, if asked, they would say the same thing about you now that, you know, the dust has started to settle. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious when you, when you moved over, was it just you or did you have your, did you have a buyer agent and an admin at that point? Yeah, so I had a buyer's agent and an admin. My admin wasn't actively selling, but was licensed, and we all moved together. All right, so you being a high D, you're the first one to make the decision. How did you then take that decision to those folks and 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 kind of you know get them involved? So I shared it with them once I had made my decision, once I had completely vetted it and decided that this was the right thing. And then I shared with them the opportunity. I shared with them, you know, the, the important parts to them, which were the split and that kind of thing. And then I shared with them the things that don't really matter. I mean, Mike, we were operating independently. We had our own satellite office. We we had our own systems. We were using a different CRM. We we'd been using, I had been using Dot Loop since 2009. I'm an original beta tester. So, you know, we had been operating independently pretty much except for getting our checks from the main office. Right. So nothing changed for us other than again, the logo and sure. a few systems and tools. So when I shared it with them, you know, first of all, my admin was my employee. So I, I don't think it really, I mean, I'm sure she had a loyalty to KW, but it wasn't really a factor. Once I shared it with my buyer's agent, the split was less for her. Mm -hmm. And she trusts me. And she said to me, thank you for, for letting me know. And I gave them a couple of videos to watch mm -hmm. about EXP. And I said, let me know if you have any questions. And my buyer's agent came back to me and said, I trust you to do the right thing for me, for our team and for my family. And I will do what you think is right. And I said, you know, I want you to feel good about this too. And I shared with her the opportunities. And I still think that for her, some of it hasn't really come to the big picture yet, but I know it will. And I know it's the right thing for her family. And as soon as those things start to trickle through, it'll be a big deal. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of what I was looking for. I, I, I think that, you know, and just so you know, most, most everybody I asked that question to talks um, about loyalty in some regard, uh, because I mean, you're, you're leader, you're the leader, the leader of the ship, right? You're at the helms. And so they expect, you know, that in your position that, you know, you're doing your due diligence when you make big decisions like that and even small decisions within the business. Um, so they, it sounds like when you went to, um, your buyer agent that they were, they're fully bought in, not because of EXP, although it is a great alternative to, Right. where they were at, but because of you, right? Yes. Yep. And, well, and, and that doesn't happen if you don't have solid relationships with your team and, you know, you don't have that loyalty and that mutual respect. You have to have that. Yep. I couldn't agree more. So where do you, so, you know, I'm sure like now you've been over for a little while and obviously you guys are, you, you guys are moving and grooving 12 million bucks, um, living a great life. You got the book, you got all kinds of different stuff going on right now. What's like, what's next for you with this whole EXP thing? 15,000 plus agents now. I have, you know, uh, to be really honest with you, Mike, I'm struggling with what's next because writing a book was such a huge like thing for me that I never thought I could do that just having that come out in August was like mind blowing for me. And, and I'm an achiever. 
Um, if you've ever done the Strengths Finder 2.0, Achievers, that was yesterday. What's mm -hmm. coming up? What's next? I don't know what's next. I know that um, I'm putting together a transaction management program. Uh, we have a trans transaction management company. What I see is an opportunity to help agents that come on my EXP team across the country to be able to mentor them, to be able to offer them standard operating procedures with buyers, with listings, with transactions, and really give them some quality co coaching. But I don't really like to coach. I like to train. I like to show them the systems. I like to give them the setup so that they can thrive, right? Because creating these systems is a big pain in the butt and it takes a yeah. long time. So I see growing my EXP family nationally, my EXP team, that's really what I want to focus on for the foreseeable future because I just get so much enjoyment and, and satisfaction out of seeing even already, you know, there's, there's a number of agents in my group nationally, one in um, Florida, one in Michigan, for example, and they took my listing class and I mean, the response is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the guys is getting so many leads that he needs to hire a buyer's agent. So we're going to do a call tomorrow about how do you hire a buyer's agent? What does that look like? I'm able to mentor these guys and teach them lessons that I learned the hard way, cut their learning curve in half or less, and then allow them to thrive. And I think we're different than Keller Williams. And I have to say this, we're different than Keller Williams in the respect that if, if, if I'm your sponsor in EXP, I personally feel responsible to make sure that you're getting the guidance, the training, and the encouragement that you need to cap or better, right? Mm -hmm. At KW, it wasn't like that. There wasn't an investment back and I love that it was, it's almost like a sorority fraternity kind of thing, like a little brother or whatever. Like I am going to make sure that you make it. That's my commitment to you. Right. Yeah. And if we reach a point where I don't think you're going to make it, I'm going to tell you, Hey man, I don't think this is going to work for you. And before you lose everything, why don't we start looking for other opportunities or mm -hmm. something like that? You know? Right. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Um, tell me about, and you and I are from really kind of the same area. Tell me about conversations with agents from traditional brokerages, if if you're having any. What what are those like? I mean, do you think that you think people are going to continue to pay, um, you know, these huge caps um, and royalties o over the next three to five years? Are people still going to be able to find value in that? Are agents still going to be able to find value in that? So there's a really great one hour video podcast from Jim Rohn that talks about bringing people on to MLM companies. Now that's not what we have, but that's the set back in the eighties, this, this podcast. And he talks about this Bible story, which I'm going to screw up, but he talks about um, sowing seeds in a garden. And he says, you know, you put these seeds in a garden and you want it to grow, but you have to know that a certain amount of seeds are going to get taken by a bird and fly away. Mm -hmm. that's just going to happen, right? So traditional brokerages, I see a lot of times as the birds that are flying away. Mm -hmm. If this is your trajectory and a traditional brokerage is here where you're paying your broker 50% and they're giving you leads and you're going into the office and getting that and your Keller Williams is entrepreneurial, so it's on the other side or mm -hmm. EXP is entrepreneurial, it takes so much to get somebody from that dependency of the, tra the, the traditional brokerage out of that and then to the, to the EXP model. So, mm -hmm. so that traditional brokerage, what are they doing? Well, they're giving them marketing. They're giving them transaction coordinators. They're giving them leads. They're giving them all these things and they become addicted to it. But and not everybody's a good business person. Not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur. And so some of those traditional brokerages, I think a lot of those people need to stay there. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of these, like 
um, a lot of these traditional brokerages, um, like Coldwell Banker, for instance, they don't they they don't even give you leads for the most part. You may be on some sort of a relocation um, uh, around Robin or something like that, but you know, even then, they're taking like forty five percent of your commission. Um, and and I I can tell you, it it seems to me like the mindset of the agent at those brokerages is they're branding Coldwell Banker, and Coldwell Banker loves that, right? Yes. They're they're. And what they need to understand is they are the brand. The yes. agent is the brand. And, yes. and, and I think once people start, once agents start to understand that, you know what, I'm the brand. Am, am I really going to continue to pay you $50,000 a year, you know, with a 6% royalty? Can I justify paying that? Right. And so I, I, I think I have a feeling that over the next five to 10 years, that some of these traditional brokerages, um, unless they make some sort of a massive uh, change in, in their business model, are just simply going to go away because they just don't provide any value other than their name. I mean, I think what they'll do is they'll continue to put money in front of it and and show these agents that they're doing all these things for them. And they're going to end up putting themselves out of business because they're spending too much money on leads and social media and you know all of these things that it's it's not going to make sense at the end of the day with what's left. And Mike, I'm really glad you said that about, you know, most of the traditional brokerage people are caught up in the, the brand, right? And I've had two two detailed conversations with two people in a traditional brokerage and that's how I knew this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And one of them just kept saying, well, what does EXP do? What is EXP's relocation uh, department? Okay. What is their marketing department? Show me the marketing that you guys do, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, listen, that's all you. If you need that, you do, you know, like, that's what they're getting from their broker and that's what they think is important. And I said, you know, people choose you for you. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a logo change on your sign and your card. And those traditional brokerages work so hard to say, you need us, you need us, you need us. Nobody's going to hide. Our name is behind you. People are going to recognize that. And I'm doing just fine being one of the very first EXP agents in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. No slowdown whatsoever at all. And, you know, a good question to ask a person like that is, could you hire a professional marketing firm for 50 grand a year? You could probably do it for 20 and have yep. excellent marketing. So, you know, um, I won't I won't go too deep on that. I mean, I think you and I are both in alignment. And and I think ultimately, like I said, at the end of the day, those traditional brokerages, um, it will come out. I mean, people will start to do their research. The information's all out there. Um, the, the ones that make sense, Will. The ones that start to realize the business side of it, Will. But there's still so many agents that are never going to be business minded. Yep. And they'll stay there. Yep, agree. So, um you know, we talked about, you know, the future for you and um, where we think EXP is going over the, you know, the next five to 10 years and, and, and hopefully continuing this, um, this uh, hockey stick trajectory that, you know, that we, we've we achieved now. So I'm, I'm curious, uh, and I ask everyone this when, when we wrap up the interview. So to that agent or even, even brokers out there who are listening to this, because we seem to be getting. This makes a lot of sense to I, I uh, to to people who own independent brokerages. We're we're getting a lot of those people that are coming over, but maybe th those people that are thinking about EXP or just doing their research. Um, what piece of advice would you give those people specifically about considering the change? I put you on the spot, didn't I? Yeah, and I'm trying to think because it's so multifaceted the opportunity that it's hard to just say it so quickly and easily. But I would say, keep an open mind. So go into it saying, what can I learn? Because you don't know what you don't know until you get in there. And then, you know, the other thing would be, um, dude, I just lost my train of thought. The other thing is, so oh your first God. one is just do the research, right? I mean, you got to do the research. Keep an open mind. Again, that's not the first time I've heard that. 
keep an open mind just to, to, to kind of elaborate on that a little bit is you owe it to yourself to do the research, right? Yes. And here's the other thing that I want to say very clearly. Honor your family and yourself and be more loyal to your family and yourself than you are to your current broker. Because oh. if you're somewhere else besides EXP, you're making your broker rich. Love when it. you move to EXP, you're getting a piece of that. And you can't get that until you move to EXP. As an owner with stock and with the way that they do the revenue share. So, so be more loyal to your family than you are your broker. Yep, yep. I love it, I love it, I love it. Amy, this has been so much fun. I could talk to you for another hour and a half. Hey, listen, um, how can people connect with you? And, and, and feel free to, to send people to your courses um, and how to get your book. Yeah, if you want a free PDF download of the book, go to amyb.com forward slash book or playbook for success. And if you want to get any information on courses or workshops or speaking um, engagements, you go to amyb.com and you have three options there that you can get more information. Um, I do my courses online, so it's really easy and um, very, very, very detailed and thorough. And oh. if you want the book, again, free PDF, or it's available uh, on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. Love it. And Amy B, how can people connect with you if they have questions about eXp? Um, Amy at amybsells.com, or oh. I'm always on Facebook. It's really easy to get me there. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I so Thank enjoyed you, this. Mike. This was fun. Time. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your day, um, given where your day came from earlier into this. Um, and I, I hope we can connect at uh, EXPCon and, and chat for a moment. Sounds awesome. Thank you for the opportunity, Mike. Great awesome. idea with the podcast. I'm excited to listen to some other people's stories. So thanks for archiving them for all of us. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Bye. Bye.